We got eight maximal 20 second efforts today. Big rest as we want them to be truly maximal. And it does actually take quite a long time for W Prime to actually like fully replenish. We don't want one effort to build into the next. And right now, as I said, we're trying to increase just like the actual size of each one of those matches. Um, and the only way to do that part of it is to do true maximal effort, not max effort and then going again on depleted system and just like progressively depleting W Prime more and more and more. That'll help with the replenishment and the speed and the repeatability of that, but not the actual like max. Um, like how much high intensity energy do you have to give? Um, so that's what we're doing today and uh, we'll catch in on a couple of them. Seven down. So far, gone swimmingly. They've been real good. Last three seconds has not been fun, but very good. It's amazing how long three seconds takes. I look up and it's like, holy smokes, it should be over by now. But anyways, very good power. I've been consistently getting to 800 at least on them, like at minimum. Um, and 15 second powers are all for sure over 13. So I mean, it's kind of amazing because like I'm basically doing what I did in the sprint test now seven times. And we'll go for one more now. Still, I've seen 13 for a while. Very solid workout. Catch you in just a bit. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. An exciting day. The weather is finally good enough that dad's out on the bike. We can show some run workouts. Yesterday we had a pretty solid bike. So the legs I'd say actually are not from the bike but more from the weightlifting session before. It's like a plyometric session. The legs are very sore, but nonetheless, short little bursts of speed, so they should be okay. Got two sets of four by 400 on 400 recovery. So full recoveries. We'll be aiming for just about 68 on them in that range. See if on the last set we can get them down to 65, 66, but good speed, full recovery. And then we have, uh, little zone two right after this but excited to take you along on the run and we'll catch you in a bit so just before i get to the run something i just wanted to talk a little bit about a product that i've been using over the last few weeks to try to get the absolute most out of these high intensity workouts is a product called lactigo i was sent lactigo a couple bottles of it say a month ago or so now when a teammate of mine on team draft warren muir who's a canadian zwift national champion still reigning he let me know about the product and it was really cool actually because as soon as he let me know about it, 
I started kind of digging into it and, and seeing what was in it and what, what there was to it. One of the ingredients in Lactigo is called carnosine. Immediately got my attention, sparked my interest because carnosine, very interesting, is something that I studied back years ago in university. And so it's really cool now to see something that I've already studied now being applied. And it's, it's always a cool feeling getting to use kind of what you know, right? Like people always think, you know, they study something in university and they're never gonna touch it again. Here it was really cool because as soon as I saw that one of the ingredients in this was carnosine, I'm like, I know everything about this already. And with that, what do I know about that? I know that there's a lot of evidence and there's a lot of research on the use of carnosine and beta alanine, as you'll see it, uh, in the IOC's consensus statement, beta alanine is the precursor to carnosine. There's a lot of research on it. On that, the, uh, in terms of IOC and stuff like that, it is informed choice and informed support approved, so there are no banned substances in it. And in that consensus statement where they talk about all sorts of sports supplements, and they're kind of compiling all the research into one place, what they showed is that beta alanine, the use of beta alanine and carnosine showed a significant measurable 0.2 to 3% improvement in efforts ranging from 30 seconds up to 10 minutes. And at first glance, you might say 0.2 to 3%. That's nothing. Get out of town. But remember what type of efforts we're talking about here. We're talking about very short type efforts. We're talking big power. And so over that type of an effort, even let's say, as I said, 0.2 to 3%, even if I go smack dab in the middle of that at 1.5%, if we talk about a 1.5% improvement on let's say 700 or 800 watts, I'll take it, that's a big improvement. Like on 800 watts, what is that, 12 watts, something like that, I'll take it every day of the week, right? That's a big improvement. So as I said, it is a measurable improvement. So And so what is carnosine? Not to go crazy in depth here, because I don't want to make this 25 minutes long like I always do, basically the, the gist of it is, is that carnosine is an intracellular buffer. What that means is that, as you know, as you probably heard, read about, anything like that, when you're exercising at a very, very high intensity, you generate lactate and hydrogen ions, and there are buffer systems within the cell to help neutralize those protons, those hydrogen ions. One of the buffering systems is carnosine, there's another in bicarbonate. Actually on that, again, not to go too much into the weeds there, Carnosine is actually a very effective buffer because carnosine works at a pKa of 6.8, bicarbonate 6.1, which means that you actually don't need as much of a drop in the pH for carnosine to start working. It actually starts working as a buffer very, very quickly. In the end, what's that allow us to do? It allows us potentially to go harder and to go longer. And actually, that is my experience with things. I'll tell you that the very first time I put it on, didn't really notice any difference couldn't tell you that it was on or off. And actually that's kind of expected. When you look at the research, you'll see that it does take some time to see some effects. And that's exactly what I saw. I saw about, say a week and a half in, when I did that one minute power test, the go longer, go harder thing that I mentioned before, that's where I saw it come into play. As I said, I'm not being paid to, uh, to say this at all. There's nothing in this for me. So I'm giving you my honest opinion. And what I'm telling you is that that one minute power test with Lactigo, on absolutely felt different than any other one minute tests I've done before. Other one minute tests kind of go like this. 45 seconds, you're, you're like you're hurting, but like you're okay. Last 15 seconds, feel like death. If it gets to that point, and everyone's probably felt it, that it's like, it's, it's almost impossible to pedal in a circle. Your legs like become dysfunctional in those last 15 seconds, and they last an eternity. I tell people this all the time. Whenever people say, time's going too fast, I say, do a one minute power test. That'll put things into perspective. When those 15 seconds may as well be an eternity. And so that's normally what happens. Basically the last quarter of it, awful. This, pre, this last one minute power test that you saw earlier on the channel, I was actually pretty good, basically until like 57 seconds. If it went maybe to like 70 seconds, that's where I would have got it. So the go longer, yeah, I went about 12 seconds longer at like, like feeling good, feeling like, yeah, we got this, than I've gone before. Did I go harder? I went 10 watts harder than I've ever gone before on it. So I have noticed good improvements with, with using it. Um, as I said, that was a big personal best for me and it absolutely felt different than I had before. I've been using it before run workouts and hitting some pretty good run workouts uh, recently. Something I should mention also is that carnosine is actually a very powerful antioxidant, so it, it can actually help a lot with recovery. 
Um, so that's why they say actually on the bottle here that you should use it pre-workout, take a shower, and then put it on post. So anyways, that's my experience with it. I've, I've found so far really good results with it with these very high intensity efforts. So I'm gonna continue using it. In terms of actually putting it on, I felt really no oily residue or anything like that. There's no odor to it or anything like that. So, so far my experience is very good with it. And I'm just gonna continue using it and hopefully we can bump that one minute power to even higher level. So anyways, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode uh, of me talking way too long. Um, and we'll catch you in on the run now. Six. Did you see the hawk? Oh. Faster. going fast, but then it didn't really feel that fast. Push that one. That one I felt like I had a lot more to get up there. It's too hard to judge. First of the season, tough to get our pacing right perfectly, like me and your pacing. Yeah. Because it's hard with the bike, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's like you know, you're either going really fast nine, or nine, way too two. slow. Anyways, so solid workout like i said we wanted to do like 68s first set it was 68 67 67 67 and the second set said let's see if we can do like 65 66 which we did 66 66 65 and unfortunately the last one was 67 we just kind of messed up our pacing a little bit it's our first of the year with dad pacing me on the bike so we're still kind of getting that pace that feel a little bit and sometimes with the bike it turns out it is like an art pacing on on the bike it, it is actually quite difficult for the cyclist um, because they're so much faster than the runner so it is kind of difficult sometimes to get it like so that it's fast enough but uh you know you're not you're not um in the way of the runner like you're not getting in their way but you're also not pulling away and so i wanted dad to just be right ahead of me because we were in a pretty good headwind there and I was actually solo for a lot of them, and that's why we ended up being fast. On the last one, I thought if I can get right on his wheel, then we can end off, you know, with a really quick one, 63, 64, or something like that. Um, but it turned out, like I said, like I felt, uh, you'll hear in the video, I was saying go faster, and it felt like we were running really smooth, and then you start thinking, Am I running, is it, is it that I'm running so fast that I feel like I'm running smooth? Is that what's happening here? But it turns out that I felt really smooth because we were actually running 67. Um, which I mean is good because it's still 248 a kilometer. So it shows you, just stay still for a second. So it shows you that, you know, you feel slow and it feels smooth at 248, which I guess is as good of a sign as running potentially a really fast uh last one to finish off the workout so that's all for today's video just as i do my outro here here was just a tempo run from just a couple two days after this track set uh it was four by 200 uh in 33 to start then a 5k tempo half marathon pace that was 1614 would have actually been a lot quicker uh, but i made a wrong turn into a dead end on the third split but nonetheless felt really smooth and then did four 200s right after uh, and 32 average. Uh, so overall, it was a really good week of running, real good week of training. Excited to take you along for next week. And as usual, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.